Welcome to video 9, 3.5 rational functions, number one. So what are rational functions? Rational functions, you should hear the word ratio or fraction. So we're going to graph fractions, essentially a polynomial over a polynomial. So these are different types or what the equations are going to look like. Okay, and they tend to have branches and different asymptotes, vertical asymptotes, horizontal asymptotes, and we're going to get into all different aspects of it so that by the time we are done, you can dissect each equation and identify all parts. So let's go ahead and get started. So as we go through, I'm going to have the, um, the directions on the left and the example on the right. I strongly suggest at some point you pause the video and you get all of this down, okay? So go ahead and do that now. The first thing we need to do when we're graphing rational functions, step number one, we always factor and clean up the equation. So if we're looking over here on the right, f of x equals x minus 1 over x squared minus 1. I notice that x squared minus 1 isn't factored completely, and it factors as x plus 1 over x minus 1. I have an x minus 1 in my numerator and an x minus 1 in my denominator, so those can cancel. So my cleaned up version is 1 over x squared. So we're going to use everything with that from now on. Okay, so now we get into finding any holes. So you get a hole if any factors cancel. In this case, we had x minus 1's cancel. So to figure out the x value, we set all canceled factors equal to 0. So that's x minus 1 equals 0. And we solve for x. We get x equals 1. We then plug that x value into our cleaned up equation to solve for y. So our cleaned up equation is 1 over x plus 1. So y is going to be 1 over 1 plus 1 or 1 half. So we're going to have a hole at 1 comma 1 half. The next thing we need to talk about are x-intercepts. To find the x-intercept, remember, it's when y equals 0. So we essentially just need to set the numerator equal to 0 and solve for x. Now, the numerator of our cleaned up version is 1. So we set 1 equal to 0. Now, because this is a false statement, it doesn't have an x-intercept. If there were an x in our numerator, we would simply solve for x and we would get an answer. Now, just like before, bouncing and crossing, we have the same concept. It will bounce if our degree of that factor is even. It will cross at that x-intercept if the factor with which we got it from is an odd degree. In this case, since there is no x-intercept, it does not bounce or cross. We don't have to worry about that. Next thing we have to find is the y-intercept. Remember, a y-intercept is when we let x equal 0. Then we'll solve for y. So going to my cleaned up version, 1 over x plus 1, I set x equal to 0, and I solve. 1 over 0 plus 1 is simply 1 over 1, which is 1. So the y-intercept is the point 0 comma 1. The next thing we have to talk about are vertical asymptotes. Remember, asymptotes are like walls, essentially. And vertical walls for our vertical asymptote. We will never touch vertical asymptotes. The way we find a vertical asymptote is by setting our denominator equal to 0, and we'll solve for x. The reason we have that as our vertical asymptote is because, remember, when we have fractions, we can never have 0 in our denominator. That's what causes this undefined situation, so that's where we get our vertical asymptotes from. So in this case, we only have x plus 1 is the factor in our denominator, so we go through and we solve, and we get x equals negative 1. Since asymptotes are lines, we want to create or write an equation of a line. It's x equals negative 1, not just negative 1, okay? Make sure you provide an equation. What we have to do next is we need to determine the behavior along these vertical asymptotes. 
So I'm going to look at the degree of the factor that we got our vertical asymptote from. In this case, it was just x plus 1. And we can think about it as x plus 1 raised to the first power. Okay? Now, if it were an even degree, which in this case it's not, our branches would end up going in the same direction for our asymptote. So for instance, they would both be going up, like the green here, so in the end they're going in the same direction, or they would both end up pointing down along this vertical asymptote, like the orange guys here, both pointing in the same direction. If they were from an odd degree, the branches would go in opposite directions along that vertical asymptote. So if you see here, green is pointing down on the left side of the asymptote and up on the right side. Those are opposite directions. Similarly, for the orange, if I'm up on the left, I would be pointing down to the right of the asymptote. So if we take a look at our example, the factor of our denominator, x plus 1, is just being raised to the first power. It's an odd degree, therefore, they will be opposite directions along our vertical asymptote. Continuing on, now we need to talk about horizontal asymptotes. There are three scenarios we are going to look at, and they all deal with the degrees of the numerator compared to the degrees of the denominator. So, the first scenario, if the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator, then our horizontal asymptote is y equals zero. If the degree of the numerator is equal to the degree of the denominator, then we have a horizontal asymptote where it's y equals the leading coefficient of the numerator over the leading coefficient of the denominator. The third scenario is if the degree of the numerator is greater than the degree of the denominator. Then we have what's called an oblique or slant asymptote. In this class, we're not going to worry about part C. We're only going to focus on the top two scenarios of when the degree in the numerator is small or when the degrees are equal to one another. Okay, so if we're looking at our example here, what is our horizontal asymptote? Well, if we look at our cleaned up version, the degree in our numerator, we don't have a variable. It's a constant. The degree of a constant is zero. The degree of our denominator, I look at the, le the degree of my power, or sorry, of my variable here. And since there's nothing written in, it's a degree one. So we have a scenario where it's a small degree over a bigger degree. That's scenario A here. So with that said, our horizontal asymptote is simply y equals zero. Okay, the last thing we have to do before we actually graph it is we need to determine where or if our graph crosses the horizontal asymptote. So vertical asymptotes will never be touched or crossed. However, horizontal asymptotes could be crossed. So how do we determine that? Well, what we do is we set our equation equal to the value of our horizontal asymptote. Then we'll solve for x. So in our case, our horizontal asymptote is when y equals 0. So we're going to set our equation, our cleaned up equation, equal to 0. So it'll be 0 equals 1 over x plus 1. The way we would solve this is by cross multiplying. So I could in fact pretend that the left side says 0 over 1 and then when we cross multiply you get 0 times x plus 1 which is simply 0 and then 1 times 1. So we get an equation that says 0 equals 1. Well there's no x values and this is a false statement. So since that's a false statement we can go ahead and say that it does not cross our horizontal asymptote. Okay, now we're ready to go ahead and graph. So what we want to do is we want to take all of the pieces that we came up with from this page on the left to all of the others one through four on the previous note page. So I'm going to zoom in here. We said we had a hole at one comma one half. So if you note, I've got an open circle there. We also had a y-intercept at zero, one. 
So I plotted that point. We didn't have any x-intercepts, okay? All right, I also need to plot my asymptotes. We had a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 1, so I draw on a dashed line. We have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0, so I draw a dashed line in there. I know it does not cross my horizontal asymptote um, because we found that in, in part 6. So now I know I can go ahead and plot this branch right here. And I draw it as if it's passing through that point, but I, my hole, but I lift my pencil up just a little bit and continue on. Okay, now, how do I know where this second branch is? I've got no points. Well, we have to use the fact that we said along our vertical asymptote, um, we had an odd degree, so the branches were gonna go in opposite directions. So I knew enough I had enough points to determine that this branch on the top right was going to look like this. So since it's to the right of my asymptote and pointing up, I know when I'm to the left, I have to be pointing down. So I know I'm going to be starting down here, and then I just draw it following the asymptotes along the way. Let's try another example where we're putting it all together. So now this example was already, well, started to be factored for us, and I noticed that the x minus 1s cancel, so I canceled those right away. Then I also factored the remaining numerator to 2x minus 1 and x plus 5, and my remaining denominator, x minus 3, x plus 2. So now let's go ahead and find the holes. Remember, this is where we set our um, crossed out factors equal to 0. So x minus 1 equals 0, I get x equals 1. Plugging 1 back into our original, or our cleaned up version, I get my y to be negative 1. So we have a hole at 1, negative 1. X-intercepts are where our numerator equals 0. So I'm just focusing on these two factors. So when 2x minus 1 equals 0, I get a uh, x-intercept of 1 half comma 0. And if x plus 5 equals 0, I get negative 5 comma 0. Since both of these factors have an odd degree, I know it's going to cross at those x-intercepts. Our y-intercept is when x equals 0, so into our cleaned up version, I plug 0 in for x, and I get y to be 5 sixths. For the vertical asymptotes, we set our denominator equal to 0, and we solve. So I get a vertical asymptote at x equals 3 and at x equals negative 2. Notice I gave two equations. Now, because both of these are a degree one or odd degree, I know the branches will go in opposite directions along these vertical asymptotes. Our horizontal asymptote, it might help to go back to the cleaned up version prior to factoring to figure out our horizontal asymptote. And what we should notice is that the numerator is a degree two and the denominator is a degree two. So when the degrees are the same, we have to look at the leading coefficient of the numerator over the leading coefficient of the denominator. So the leading coefficient of our numerator is two, and the leading coefficient of our denominator is one. So we get a horizontal asymptote of y equals two. The last thing we have to determine is where this crosses or if it crosses our horizontal asymptote. So remember, we set our cleaned up version equal to the value of our horizontal asymptote. So in this case, we're gonna set it equal to two. Now notice how I went to the unfactored version when I was setting this up. It's a lot easier to deal with this way. So now what I did was I cross multiplied. So I essentially said that that's two over one. And when we cross multiply, we will get two x squared minus 2x minus 12. I simply distributed this 2 to everything here. And then 1 times this uh, remaining polynomial. The x squareds are going to cancel, and I end up getting x is equal to negative 7 over 11. So it does cross the horizontal asymptote when x equals negative 7 elevenths. So the y value we know is y is 2. So it's going to cross at this point negative 7 elevenths comma 2.
Now it's time to go ahead and graph all of this. What I suggest we do is we start by plotting the asymptotes. We have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 2. I've got one vertical asymptote at x equals negative 1, or sorry, x equals negative 2, and one at x equals 3. I know that along these asymptotes, the branches will be in opposite directions, so I can make note of that. I also have some points. I've got a hole, I've got two x-intercepts, I've got a y-intercept, and I know where it crosses the horizontal asymptote. I want to plot all of these points. So I plot our hole with an open circle, I plot one x-intercept, I plot our y-intercept, I plot where it crosses that horizontal asymptote. We also have one more uh, intercept at negative 5, 0. So now I just have to start with one branch that I know. Since I only know one point over here, and I know it doesn't cross the asymptote at any place here, this branch is going to be stuck in this left, bottom left little area. So I can go ahead and graph that. Now since I'm going down to the left of this asymptote, I know on the right side of this asymptote I need to be pointing up. So I'm gonna start up here. And I'm gonna follow along the points that I've already plotted. So we go through where it crosses our horizontal asymptote, through our y-intercept, our x-intercept, through our hole, and now I go towards the other asymptote on the right, okay? Now, I don't have any points over here, so how do I know where this branch is going to be located? Well, I know that these branches need to be opposite one another. So to the left of this asymptote, this portion of the branch is pointing down. So when I go to the right, I know I have to be starting up here. Since I don't have any other points that cross this horizontal asymptote, I know this branch has to be stuck in the top right piece of our graph. If you have any questions, let me know. We will certainly go through more examples in class next time we see each other.